Defence Secretary Ben Wallace is in Norway today, where he's expected to announce the Ministry of Defence's strategy for the High North and the Arctic, reaffirming Britain's commitment to the region in the face of a more hostile Russia. So should the United Kingdom's defence strategy be looking more to our own region, to the north, to the Arctic and indeed to Europe, whereas in recent times we've been looking a little bit further to the Indo-Pacific, which is right or can we do both? With me to discuss these issues is Colonel Richard Kemp, former British Army commander in Afghanistan. Welcome to the programme. First of all, we have had uh, a, a strategy for the Arctic for quite some time. I believe it was uh, first announced in, in one particular form uh, around a decade ago, but it's being reaffirmed today. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously um, an area that is of greater interest today and greater concern today, given Russia's aggression. Of course, Russia borders off, is an, an Arctic country. And, uh, and, and of course, you know, those, those other Arctic countries, including NATO Arctic countries and non-NATO countries, um, are concerned about the potential for Russia to uh, to attack them in the Arctic. Of course, uh, you know Russia as well as China have considerable um, interest in natural resources in the Arctic, um, and, and and that goes for other countries as well, including the UK. So it's important that we do have a, uh, a strategy for how we react and how we respond and deal with the Arctic region. And an increasingly hostile Russia doesn't just play out on land, I suppose. It also plays out uh, in the air and at sea. We've seen some Russian planes incur our airspace in recent years. I suppose we must be concerned about the North Sea as well. Have we been too focused on regions further afield? And have we taken our eye off the ball to some extent? about the security threats we face in our own locality. You're absolutely right that the, you know, the, the threat from the air and the sea is, is considerable, and Russia has uh, by far the greatest military presence in the Arctic region, including a very significant part of its navy. Um, as to whether we have taken our eye off the ball, I, I, I'm not sure I could, would say we have. I think you know, our interests there have so far been relatively peripheral. We have, we have historically we have had British military units, land, sea, and air, who have been dedicated to operating the Arctic. Um, that somewhat tailed off after the end of the Cold War, um, but now it's right that it should be re-energised. I think, given that you know, given the concerns of our NATO neighbours in the Arctic, um, and you know, you, you've got to you've got to be able, really, you've got to be able to cover so many different bases. Your original sort of questioning about whether we shouldn't be so worried about the Indo-Pacific or whether we can do everything like that. I think the answer is we have to be worried about all of it and we have to have defence forces adequate to be able to um, defend our interests in, in the different regions of the world. And as a former colonial power and a permanent member of the, of the UN Security Council, we do have very, very wide ranging interests around the world. We certainly do. We have seemed to be spread a little thin over the last decade. In the Middle East, of course, we're deploying troops to those Baltic states as well, bolstering the NATO flank. Um, but, but also we've got uh, bases all around the world. Is our army up to scratch? Are we able to stretch ourselves quite so thin? The answer is no, we're not. And, you know, since the Cold War, progressive different governments uh, have progressively removed uh, our military capabilities down to a level that now I consider to be a, a dangerously low level. It risks the security and defence of our country. Um, not, and it's not just in relation to Ukraine that I'm talking about. We, we, you know, we do have very significant interests with our with our friends and allies in regions around the world, as you mentioned. Uh, and therefore, we need to have a, a, an army and a navy and an air force able to deal with that. And I, I would say that we should be looking at least at adding a percent of GDP onto our defence budget, if not doubling it to 4%. I think that, you know, may, maybe not, uh, maybe it's very difficult in financial terms, economic terms, but I think the Ukraine conflict has shown the world that it's a fundamental, a fundamental requirement to have defence and security. And it's the government's first priority. If you don't have that, then everything else fails. And I, I do think that it's not just about fighting wars, it's also about deterring wars. 
if we have weak military strength, that's a provocation to countries like Russia. Are 2% of GDP spend on the military right now is considerable. It's one of the three largest budgets, I, I believe, uh, I, I, that the Chancellor has to deal with. Uh, to, to expand it to 3 or even 4%, to ra- raise it by 50%, or 100%, where would that be best spent? Because I'm always worried when we have a spending target rather than a capability target. Do we not risk finding things to spend the money on that we might not necessarily need to? Is it not better to look at strategic capability and demands rather than a demand for spending? You're absolutely right. And it's uh, the, two, the, the, the sort of 2% of GDP is a NATO minimum NATO spending target, which is obviously it, it doesn't really in any way equate to to capabilities. Each country is very different, has different f- levels of fi- efficiency, and we're not among the most efficient, I'm afraid. Um, so 2% can go a long way in some cases and not so far in others. So it, it's, it's very much indicative, but you're absolutely 100% correct that we should be, you know, there should be another review now. We had one last year of capabilities, which I think got it very badly wrong as Ukraine shows. We need another review to look at what we need, and, and that then needs to be resourced accordingly. But of course, it's not, you know, there isn't a limitless budget. You can't just say, you know, if, if the generals and admirals, air marshals were to say, this is what we need, then you're probably spending 100% of GDP on defence. But but obviously, that's not uh, not something that should happen. There needs to be a balance between what's available and what we need. Well, the uh, Defence Secretary, Ben Wallace, seems to be a very busy man at the moment, jetting all around Europe. No doubt he's got more concerns as well. But a further review, that might just be on the cards. For now, Colonel Richard Kemp, thanks for joining us and talking through those important issues this morning.